Uh, hey everyone, Scott with the Scott Man, and we are here in the beautiful city of Prague, or as, as how the locals call it, Praha. We are located here in the heart of the Czech Republic, also known as Czechia, and we're going to talk about some of the different things to know about visiting Prague. I'm so excited to be here right now, so why not start here on the beautiful Charles Bridge. Charles Bridge also goes over the, the uh, Vltava River. And along the bridge you got many great viewpoints, a lot of beautiful statues, and of course you got even diff different vendors on the bridge, and even some performers as well. But Charles Bridge was named after King Charles IV, who was the king of the Holy Roman Empire during the 14th century. And the next thing I want to talk about with Prague is when you should visit Prague. Well, according to Rick Steves, uh, the, the main tour season is pretty much, I, in general, is between May and October, with May, June, and September being the most crowded months. Although, Prague is, is, is definitely visited all throughout the year, though. But yeah, I'm here in October, and although it's a little chilly, but the weather's been absolutely fantastic, and it's been absolutely amazing. And there's been a lot of people, but it hasn't been absolutely crazy. All right, so before we get to the sightseeing, so one thing that's really important to know is how to even get into Prague. So there's different options. You can, one, you can take an airplane, which is how I got here from the United States, and you can land at Prague Airport. And of course, another option is you can you can take the train here to the main train station here in Prague. It's located just just a little bit to the east of of, of Wenceslas Square. We'll definitely get to Wenceslas Square later in this video. And of course, another option too is if you if you have a car and you're coming from elsewhere in Europe, you can take the freeway, the autobahn, the motorway, whichever term you use for freeway. And before we get into some of the different sites, um, I want to talk about money. So, the Czech Republic, or Czechia, does not use the Euro. Although you might find a few places where they may advertise, we accept Euros here, but <laughs> most of the time, you're gonna, be, you're gonna need the, the, the Czech Karuna or Crown. It's the, it's the currency used here in the Czech Republic, because they, again, they have not adopted the Euro. And as of filming this video in October 2021, the exchange rate to U.S. dollars is about 21 and a half crowns to about one U.S. dollar. And, and also, we'd like to talk to you about the language. The main language in the Czech Republic is Czech. It is a, it is a Slavic-based la language. As for English profici proficiency, it's pretty good here, I, I would say. I, I've not really had any problem communicating in English here in, here in Prague. It hasn't been really much of a problem, but it is really good and very respectful to know a few sur survival phrases for Czech. So here's a, here's a few I'll name right now. So for hello or good day, uh, I say dobry den. And for thank you, I, I say uh, děkuji. For please, I say prosím. For goodbye, you say ahoy. And of course, the last one, Chitsi prosima zaiti salat. That means I want coleslaw, please. All right, so let's head to the Old Town and explore some of the cool sites. First, starting off with Old Town Square. There, Prague is, at least downtown Prague is divided up into four different quarters. You got the Old Town, the New Town, Lesser Town, and the Castle Quarter. We're start off here in beautiful Old Town. You got everything from Gothic towers to Baroque domes and even Art Nouveau as well. We're starting off here at Old Town Square, which is the one of the top tourist destinations here in Prague. Got this beautiful looking square. You got everything from the uh, from the Jan Hus Memorial to the beautiful clock tower. That's the that's the statue of of Jan Hus. He's the Czech philosopher who heavily criticized the Catholic Church long before Martin Luther did, uh, about a century later. More specifically, this is the beautiful Old Town Hall. And you got the astronomical clock too. And if you climb to the top of the clock tower, you get some amazing views of Prague, including Prague Castle, 
and of course the the town square itself and off in the distance you'll even see team church beautiful church which was built back in the 14th century but of course the cool thing about Old Town is that there are a lot of pedestrian only zones, so you don't have to worry about automobiles a whole lot. Some areas, yeah, you do though, obviously, but, but of course there's more to Old Town than just Old Town Square. So let's get out the square now. As you go away from the Old Town Square, you got two major streets which go through the Old Town. Right here at Seletna Street, which goes east from, from Old Town Square, and then going the other way is Karlova Street. But along both Seletna and Karlova Street, you got a lot of different shopping opportunities, although a little bit more on the touristy side. And let's not forget about Naprikope, which is a very popular street with a lot of upscale shops. Yep, and also here in Old Town, also have Havel Havelska Market, which is a very popular market. You buy a lot of a lot of cool things, um, not only for tourists but also for locals too. So the cool thing about the market is that it yeah, formed in 1232, and as I was saying, it's like you can find many cool products ranging from different fruits and other produce, a lot of souvenirs, candies, etc. Lots of options. Okay, maybe scratch that last part. I didn't see any candy over there today, but still, there's a lot of cool stuff over there. And we're here in the northwestern part of the Old Town. This is what's called the Jewish Quarter, which is an area that has a lot of historic Jewish synagogues as well as other other great sites celebrating the Jewish heritage in Prague. Here in the Jewish Quarter, as a part of your ticket for the Jewish Museum, you can see a beautiful collection of historic synagogues as well as the old Jewish cemetery. And as an extra add-on, you can also visit the old new synagogue, which is the oldest active synagogue in Europe. And another cool museum to check out here in the old town, over to the east of the Jewish Quarter, we have the Convent of St. Agnes of Bohemia. Inside, it contains a beautiful art museum containing classic Bohemian art, as well as art from Central Europe from 1200 to 1550. And we're here at the third area of downtown Prague, and this is the Castle Quarter, and the main attraction here is the beautiful Prague Castle. And we're here at the beautiful Prague Castle. Prague Castle and the Castle Quarters for around a thousand years it's been the traditional seat of Czech rule. Even today, because the office of the Czech president is just over, over that way. But Prague Castle is one of the top attractions here in Prague and highly recommended. So right now, yeah, I'm standing here in the second courtyard and we come across the probably the most famous landmark here at Prague Castle. This is St. Vitus Cathedral. It is the Czech, Nas Czech National Church, the Roman Catholic Cathedral. And what's really cool is that the cathedral was built over centuries. The front half that you see here is built in the Neo-Gothic style, only constructed in the 20th century, or complete in the 20th century, where you go in the verge of the back of the cathedral is built a few centuries earlier. Other cool sites here at Prague Castle include the old royal palace, the see of the Bohemian princes since the 9th century, as well as the Basilica of St. George, which the current structure was built back in the 12th century. And of course, you can't forget about the Golden Lane. Although a little bit on the touristy side, you got a lot of beautiful shops with Amazingly beautiful architecture. And other cool sites to see in the Castle Quarry, uh, they have to check out the Strahov Monastery. It's a huge complex with, with the monastery itself and also a very historic library. So uh, coming up next, we're gonna head down to the Lesser Town. And why not start by getting a cool view of it from, from here near the castle. All right, made it down to the Lesser Town. It was a really nice walk getting down here. But yeah, what's really cool is that this part of town has been around since the 9th century. 
However, unfortunately in 1540, about 75% of it did burn down, but it was rebuilt in this beautiful Baroque style you see today. And staying right behind me, that is St. Nicholas Church, and what a beautiful church that is. One of the top attractions here in the Lesser Town is the Lennon Wall, which is a wall filled with amazing graffiti and street art. Since John Lennon's death in 1980, people would decorate the wall each day with memorial graffiti. And we're here at Waldstein Garden. And it's the largest garden here in the lesser town and what a beautiful sight this is. And all the way in the western part of the lesser town you go up Petron Hill and you can see the beautiful Petron Tower. It was built back in 1891 built out of steel in the Art Nouveau style. It kind of resembles the Eiffel Tower a little bit, although it's about a fifth the size of the Eiffel Tower, but so just take almost 300 steps to the top and you get some of the best views of all of Prague. Coming up next, we're gonna head over to the new town. So we're gonna cross back over the, the Vltava and explore more of Prague. And welcome to Vetislav Square. We're here in the new town. Vetislav Square was named after the 10th century Duke Vetislav I, or Vaslav. Most importantly, Venceslas Square was where the November 1989 Velvet Revolution took place, which is where many Czechs and Slovaks peacefully revolted against the communist rule, which led to the end of the communist regime. In, in addition to Venceslas Square, you also have a lot of cool different museums and theaters all throughout the new town as well. Because yeah, the first one, of course, is the National Museum, which is right behind us at the, at the top of Ven of uh, Venceslas Square. One museum I highly recommend here in Newtown is the Museum of Communism, which goes back into the history during the communist era of Czechoslovakia. One of my favorite museums in all of Prague, located here in the Yalta Hotel, is the Cold War Museum, which once used to be a fallout shelter during the communist era. You'll see a command room, hospital room, a spying room, and also an air filtering facility. Yeah, I gotta say, the new town is really cool. It's like if you're looking at all the different buildings, you're probably like, Scott, man, what do you mean by new town? Yeah, so this is, this, this is the newer part of town. It's still several centuries old. <laughs> And my friends, we've made it to Visharad. This is a beautiful medieval complex with a lot of cool sites, including many different beautiful parks like this one. And those views are absolutely beautiful from up from up here. Especially with the fact that we're looking away from like the old town, like where we like pretty much where everybody goes and probably get to see more parts of the city. So that is really cool. And over here we have the Basilica of Saints Peter and Paul. This is such a beautiful church. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, I gotta say, the views up here from Vicharat is absolutely amazing, especially looking out that way toward Newtown, Prague, and, and of course the Old Town, and you can even see Prague, uh, Prague Castle as well. But yeah, lots of cool destinations to check out here in Prague. But we gotta talk about more some of the other practicalities about Prague, so there's still more to this video. And now my next topic to, which is all about uh, getting around Prague. Um, of course you can definitely walk everywhere, because Prague is a very walkable city, which I've been doing a lot of that so far, but there's a lot of convenient ways of public transportation here. It's not like back home where I'm from in Detroit, where you pretty much have to drive everywhere, other than maybe some different things you can do in downtown Detroit. But we're talking about Prague here, not Detroit. <laughs> So, so different most uh, tra public transportation you can use. You got everything from trams to buses to the metro. So at this, like at this stop, for example, here in Lesser Town, you got the trams. Prague has an excellent tram system, which the trams go all throughout the city from the new town going to all the different districts throughout Prague. And of course, the buses are very convenient too. In addition to the trams here, you can also take the metro, which also takes you all throughout the city of Prague as well. The ticket machines are very easy to use, and you can change the language to English. You may pay by either check crowns or with a credit card. No PIN required. To validate your ticket, all you have to do is slide your ticket into the yellow machine either just outside the metro station or inside a tram or a bus. It'll stamp a time on your ticket and away you go onto the metro, tram, or bus. And of course, in addition to public transportation, you can also either rent bikes, scooters, and there's also options of taxis as well. And, and of course, you got Uber here as well too. Prague has an excellent amount of great restaurants to visit, including some restaurants where you can get some delicious Czech cuisine. And also some international foods as well, like Indian food, or Italian food, etc. And of course, don't forget about the cheap eats as well. And of course, you, you can't mention food without Czech beer, like a good old Pilsner. And Prague also has a lot of great hotels where you can stay at too. The hotel in particular I'm staying at is, is Hotel Maximilian, located here in Old Town Prague. And for a four-star hotel, it's a pretty good roomery I have to say it's very it's the equivalent to staying in a two-star hotel in a lot of places back home <laughs> that's one of the cool things about staying in this this part of Europe especially here in Central Europe is that uh, lower hotel rates and you can get higher quality rooms without without bursting your wallet but of course and there's also lower cost options too for anything from lower cost hotels to apartments to hostels and also Airbnb too and of course, uh, there's also a lot of great entertainment to check out here in Prague as well. Especially when it comes to the theater. Over here in Newtown, you got the National Theater. Put on some high quality ballets and operas. And at the northwestern end of Old Town, along the Vltava, you have the Rudolfinum. It's a performing arts theater. And the Czech Philharmonic plays in there. Another place we can go see some concerts is inside the Municipal House. The Municipal House is a beautiful building built in the Art Nouveau style. And over here back in Old Town we have the Estates Theatre. You can go watch some different ballets and operas. And as a matter of fact, Mozart himself even premiered some of his finest operas such as Don Giovanni. And that's the State Opera and, and inside there they put on non-Czech ballets and operas. And of course, there's also some really awesome things to do here in Prague as well that's not just limited to museums or, or the performing arts. You can also go check out different sporting events here because here in Prague, or, or the Czech Republic as a whole, they're, they take a lot of pride in their hockey and their asso association football. Or just football. Or so how it's called back, at, back in the US and Canada, soccer. And over here, this is the O2 Arena. You just take the, the B Metro from, from Prague out to the eastern part of the area and is where their hockey team plays, or where Prague's hockey team plays. And you know the Czechs love their hockey because in 1998, the Czech national team won, won the gold at the 1998 Winter Olympics in Japan. But not only that, but uh, legendary NHL 
hockey goalie, Dominic Hajic. Uh, he used to play for several teams, but, but he played for the Detroit Red Wings and the two most recent Stanley Cups, and that was, and that was in 2002 and 2008. So, little Detroit pride here, you have to say. <laughs> And Prague also has a couple of football stadiums too, which you can check out. Because Prague has two football teams. One we're here, or the one here in, near Ledna Park. This is where the AC Sparta play. And then the rival team, SK Slavia, but they play at Sonovo Stadium on the eastern part of Prague. And then, of course, before we conclude the video, just got to talk about safety a little bit. Uh, not really a whole lot to say, but uh, Prague, it's a very, very safe city. I've been here for about a week and I've had absolutely no problems here. It's, especially compared to the United States, it, it is extremely safe. I felt very, 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 very comfortable walking around town at night. Uh, so if you're looking for like, areas of avoid, just may, uh, check with your hotel or check with the local but and I did read that yeah ex exercise a little bit more caution like at, at Betsislaus Square like at night or something but but yeah I've had such a wonderful time here in Prague Prague is an absolute absolutely beautiful city you must visit Prague if you have not done so already so yeah Czechia or the Czech Republic is absolutely beautiful and of course there's more to the Czech Republic than Prague I also recommend taking some different day trips or getting out of the state, like such as going to Kutnahora, going to check out the Bone Church or some of the cool things in in the town, and also there's uh, Terezin, which used to be a well, as a fortified town, which unfortunately was a Jewish ghetto during the Holocaust during World War II. But still, it's an eye-opening experience. And then, of course, there's other destinations too, like you go off to Brno or you could go to Chesky Kremlov to the south. But yeah, lots lots of cool things to see and do here in Prague. So I hope you enjoy this little guide. I know, I know it's a little long, but I wanted to cover a lot of different things in this video. So, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to click that subscribe button to uh, come along and join me for the venture. And uh, don't forget to click that notification bell so that way you know when a new video goes live. Well, thanks for watching, and this is Scott, the Scott Man, signing out.